So I'm here to convince you one of two things. First of all, clouds are awesome to look at. Bad boy. Job done. Okay, second of all, I want to convince you that the science that underpins their formation is pretty cool too, and you come across it in your day-to-day -day lives. By the time we're done here, you'll be able to make your own pet cloud to take around with you anywhere and impress your friends with. I'm a paraglider. I spend my weekends trying to climb up to the cloud so I can fly as far and for as long as possible. Cumulus clouds like these are formed on top of rising columns of warm, moist air we call thermals, and I'm going to talk about some of the processes that take place to generate them. The first thing you'll notice about cumulus clouds is they tend to hang around up in the sky where the air pressure is lower. Down here on the ground, the sheer volume of air pushing down from above acts over our body with a force equivalent to the weight of a couple of elephants. But we don't normally notice because the pressure inside is about the same. So what we need to do is come up with a way of showing you what happens as we reduce the air pressure around something. Well, in here, down on the front, I have a model of little Joe. Little Joe down here is going to be modeling a similar thing that happened to Joe Kittinger. He went up ex exceedingly high in the atmosphere, and you'll notice how his balloon went from small and flaccid to big and stiff as it rose. Uh, on more than one, uh, more than one time, his equipment failed him once his hand actually inflated to twice its normal size. And he could have ended up looking a little bit like this, if I can build it up, uh, if it had all gone a bit wrong. Any lads in the audience who are getting ideas, I'm sorry, I have to warn you, it is a two-way process. Okay. Okay, so we all know that warm air rises. As evidence of this, many of us will have seen uh, an imposing flock of Chinese lanterns gently wafting downwind from the city to the airspace around a panic-stricken Bristol airport on New Year's Eve. <laughs> Thermals work in the same way. They're like invisible hot air balloons rising up through the sky, and we try and take a ride of them on the way up. But as they rise, with a drop in pressure, they too expand. And as they expand, they have to do work on the surroundings to move it out of the way. To feel what it's like when you do work on something, if you've got an elastic band, you can pop that on your lips now. Okay, what I want you to do is give the elastic band a little bit of a stretch, wait for a second, and then release. You'll notice as you pull it apart, doing work on it, it heats up. And as it does work to contract, it cools down. So when you do work, you can cool down. This explains why when you do work on a bicycle pump, it gets hot, and the long-lost original lyrics to Engelbert Humperdinck's song, which went something like, that elastic band on your lips has made them warm. Release it, my darling, cool them down. This is also the reason why we blow on soup. To a certain extent, we're moving hot air out of the way, which allows for better conduction, but also, by pursing our lips, we're forcing the air to expand as it comes out of them. You can give this a try in the back of your hands right now. Small pursed lips, big fat lips. You should notice that with a sort of a bigger mouth, it's a little bit warmer. Shameless buffer slide, thank you very much. This brings me on to... <laughs> That's all right, I'm running good to the time. This brings me on to the humble CO2 fire extinguisher, which works in a very similar way. In here, we have a gas under pressure that we allow to come out, and as it comes out, it's going to expand, doing work on the surroundings, cooling down. Now, that's useful if you want to put a fire out, not so useful if you're holding on to any of the metal bits on the fire extinguisher, so please do not. Okay, but the gas that you just saw there in the atmosphere, that cloud was not carbon dioxide, it was water vapor condensing because uh, the surrounding air got so cold. It's the same kind of effect you see in those shamelessly inaccurate pictures of a crazy chemist on a TV. Just a bit of dry ice, if I can uh, sort of hold it up. There you go. Looks a little bit like this. The temperature we need to hit is known as the dew point. On a humid day, the dew point is close in temperature to the ambient. So that explains why you feel so hot and muggy. Your skin can only be cool by a couple of degrees before your sweat stops evaporating and collects in your armpit like, you know, who God knows what. Anyway, so we need to cool our gas down for it to condense. Uh, the problem is that if you cool a gas down below its condensation point, it may not actually condense. You can supercool it. Sounds confusing, but you'll be familiar with one of these. This actually has a similar kind of process happening. The insides of the packaging are very smooth. What we need to do is provide small particles or imperfections to act as a nucleus for the formation of a crystal. Same kind of explanation that explains why you can see these bubbles that you can't actually see on this screen uh, uh, forming in the same place in the glass. These condensation nuclei actually have an effect on our weather. Okay, it can rain more or less on a weekday or on a weekend, depending where you live, because all the condensation nuclei we chuck out of our cars and factories during the working week. You can pimp up the effect by adding other kinds of uh, nuclei. Okay, in this case, raisins or mentos, if you're not in somewhere where we've really been very nice to the people to get into. But this doesn't explain why clouds suck. Well, the reason clouds suck is we've got some gas coalescing to form a liquid. As it does so, heat is released, giving our thermal an extra boost. Good news for paragliders, unless you get sucked into the cloud. Eva Vishniska here found herself under a thundercloud, cumulonimbus. What happens there is it gets high enough for the liquid to actually freeze, giving an extra boost to the thermal. She found herself climbing at over 60 miles an hour up to the stratosphere. Unbelievably, she survived. 
So anyway, I promised you how to make a cloud. So we said we needed some water vapor. Earlier on, I've uh, got some water in here. I've just added a few condensation nuclei from a spent match, and we need some adiabatic cooling. So if you compress it and release, I can show you. No cloud, hopefully. Cloud. And to give in, hang on. This is me, absolute W sure, sorry. Same. <laughs> 